Welcome to Easy Eats. My name is Chef Eve DeShane and today we're in the uh, learning kitchen here at the Greener Village with uh, the kitchen's original uh, or original caretaker, Kate McKay. Welcome, Kate. Hi, it's so good to be back, Eve. It really is terrific. Fantastic. Um, I thought I'd have you on today, Kate, because I want to talk about the kitchen on how it started mm -hmm. and where it is today. And, and I mean, there's a lot of similar things, but it, it's kind of different. So can you uh, tell me how that also got started? Well, the original brainchild um, was Elizabeth, who was the executive director here at the, and she had uh, spent a lot of time teaching community cooking classes, etc. So it was part of her vision, and uh, it became uh, a working kitchen. And then it was a question of what do we do with it? Right. So we tried different kind of. Uh, we did a lot of catering at first, as we were trying to get the word out. We did. Um, Budget Cuisine, which was the, the first series of this show, and that was also about publicity and marketing. And we were just always kind of experimenting on how we were going to reach our target audience, which was the people here in the food bank. Because that was one of the needs that we identified, is that a lot of the clients here at the food bank didn't have the kind of basic cooking skills that they, they needed in order to make use of the foods that they were getting. And so they were kind of caught in this trap of very expensive options and not knowing how to go cheaper. Our, our program, we weren't trying to kind of push a vegetarian uh, diet or anything, but let's face it, that peasant food is the cheap stuff. You get uh. rid of the meat and the cheeses and that sort of stuff, and it helps stretch the budget. I always say uh, sometimes we're vegetarian by budget, not by <laughs> choice, right? So absolutely, and, and more so today with the price of groceries, groceries going and up everything. and the inflation of meat and stuff like that. So this, so what are you making up for us today? We are making gungo stew. Gungo stew. Uh, uh, what's a gungo? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a Jamaican stew. Okay. Okay. So it's going to have a little bit of spice, but of course you don't taper that to what we want. But it's based on beans. There's no meat in it, so it's beans and vegetables and it is very versatile. And the other thing about it is it's really fast to put together. So the kitchen started out on a shoestring budget as well, didn't it? We had a lot of plans and how we wanted it. And we were kind of had gone through several things, but it was always costing it out. And it's like, you know, we don't have the money for this and we don't have the money for that. And even the, the generosity of Fredericktonians is amazing. Absolutely. Um, but it was a big ask. So um, we were working and, and we really didn't have the kitchen up and running. We were still at the thinking and planning stage. And then there was a couple here in Fredericton who had heard about the project that we were thinking about, still very much pink balloon stage. Yeah. They had come into an inheritance that they didn't feel that they needed and they very generously donated the money specifically for the kitchen. That was the only thing it was to be used for. And I will remember it as long as they lived. One of the admin staff come down and she was so excited and I, sat and I opened this envelope and there was a check for $25,000 and I was just shaking because this was going to be our kitchen and I know $25,000 even back then wasn't a huge amount of money but we had the goodwill of the community. There was so much stuff that was donated, building supplies volunteer laborers. We had carpenters come in. We had electricians that would come in and donate three or four hours of their time. I'm still kind of doing that. Yeah. A lot of the equipment that I have, granted, we did get grants and we do have budget too, but yeah. a lot of the stuff you see here, the pots that I'm using today, have been donated. It wouldn't exist without the generosity of people in Fredericton. How do we start with our gungo stew? Okay, well, we're going to start with uh, the basics of most kind of uh, the alpha and omega of certainly European cooking and also Jamaican, and that is mirepoix, mirepoix, you know, our friend. So yeah, mirepoix is, I guess, a French culinary term that just basically means onions, carrots, celery, sometimes leek, if you've got it. Yeah, and this is the key part of this recipe, if you got it. If you got it, right. <laughs> so we're just going to put this in. I just wanted to soften the vegetables a little bit. Okay. So, and here's our celery. And then once it softens a little bit, I'll put some garlic in it. Um, we put garlic in too early, as you know, it easily burns. So, you know, I just let it cook down a little bit, and at that point in time, we can uh, add the garlic. 
Alpha and Omega of Jamaican flavors is allspice and thyme. So we're going to season this heavily with allspice and in thyme. Time. Okay. So those are the two basics that we have. I also have some salt in here. And additionally, it kind of got all mixed up here, um, some cayenne pepper. Okay. Now one of the optional ingredients that we're talking about in this, we have uh, coconut milk. Okay. And coconut milk, of course, is something you can use to cool things down, but it is an optional ingredient. So if you are using the coconut milk, go ahead and use the full dose of cayenne pepper. I got gotcha. you. And if you're not using the coconut milk, I'd cut that in half. Se season accordingly. So you're yeah. talking about allspice. Is there any kind of mimic? Because I know allspice is kind of something that if you have in your pantry, you may not use all the time. Can you kind of play around and use something else? Um, I would use a little bit of cinnamon, a touch of clove. Um, a little bit of nutmeg, egg, maybe. Nutmeg, yeah, that would work as well. And really, um, all, I mean, allspice grows in Jamaica, naturally, yeah. so they always have it. But it's one of those things that you can kind of just put uh, in a little bit, and it's optional. You probably wouldn't notice a lot if you didn't have it in at all. So if you don't have allspice, leave it out. As this is uh, browning, getting a little bit of color and stuff like that, uh, Kate, uh, what brought you to cooking? Is this something, is this a career path that you chose? My former incarnation. I yeah. was a 911 operator for the city of Fredericton. Fun. Yeah, it was. I did that for nearly 25 years and I enjoyed every minute. It was uh, a front row seat on the Circus Called Life. Yeah. And, uh, but cooking has always been my hobby and I was very blessed. My mother was a fabulous cook. Okay. And when she was first married, my parents were military. When they were first married, they were over in Germany um, just post-war. And, of course, uh, the German economy, things were very difficult. My mother had grown up on a farm here in Canada. And so she wasn't used to not having an abundance of fresh food. Yep. So fortunately, her landlady took pity on this poor Canadian bride and taught her how they cook in Europe um, on budget. Like okay. the peasant cuisine yep. of Europe, which, of course, was necessary in post-war Germany. Absolutely. So what brought you to, I guess, the Greener Villages? It was called Our Greener Kitchen at the time. I just walked in the door. I was looking, I, after I left the police force, I was looking for something to keep myself occupied a little bit. And I walked in here and I met Elizabeth and we got chatting about food. And I actually had met Elizabeth once upon a time at some kind of charity event that I had made soup for. Which okay. is probably the best thing I make. <laughs> and uh, she says, how would you like to work on this kitchen project? And it was just perfect. It was the right time for me, and I took her on. So we're going to start adding some peppers and some potatoes and stuff, so I'm going to start chopping that while mm -hmm. you add your garlic. Yeah, and I'm just adding uh, the garlic now. I know this is starting to get a little warm. Perfect. So we'll so just turn that down just a hair for you. And I'm just putting some uh, stock Okay, in. yeah. Now this is vegetable stock, but use uh, um, chicken stock if you have it, or if you don't have it, just use plain water. Absolutely, whatever yeah. you have on hand. I always yeah. try to keep a stock going, I guess if that's another way to keep budget friendly, yeah. is just all your vegetable trimmings and stuff oh like that, yeah. just throw it into a pot. Absolutely. Let it simmer, and then if you've got chicken bones, add your chicken bones or whatever. And the other thing about this recipe is one of those things that's very forgiving. Yes. Um, you know, if, you, if I have a handful of kale at the back of the fridge, it gets thrown in. It's, you know, well, that's And that's want. what a good stew is, right? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's just a, a little bit of everything that you've got. There we go. I'll get these potatoes done here for a second. And uh, so you mentioned that, uh, so were you, you, you were a team of people yeah. at, the, at the beginning. There was a lot of different people that were working here. Some people had restaurant experience. Some people didn't. Um, we had quite a group of volunteers that would come in and make up uh, various dishes. We catered stuff. We it was just trying a trying to get the word out, trying to publicize the kitchen that we were here, trying to figure out what our programming should be. It was it was very experimental. 
kind of like what I'm doing now with my with my soup programming. So yes, a lot exactly. of one of the soups that I always make is something that's from the warehouse. So yes. it's uh, and that was one of the things Donna did it more than I did, but it was coming up with the kind of ingredients that were in people's boxes and making recipes that they could use for that. Well, that's it. There's no sense, like you were saying, giving somebody a box of food and saying, here you go, on your yeah. way. And when you have a chance that some of them may not even have a can opener. Yeah. So and that was one of the things that for me, it became important to learn is to look at it. I mean, some people are dealing with one burner. Yep. Some people are, and so it was a real eye opener for me and to how to translate because for me to say saute such and such and blah, blah, blah. No, you've got to back up, get rid of the technical language, talk to people about what they are and to make it approachable and friendly and it's, you can do it. It's the same concept. Yeah. Everybody comes in, we make bread and then we have, we hopefully have enough to hand out for a day. Yeah. It's worth of, uh, of people coming through the lineup. Our dream, my hope eventually is to be able to do it for a week's yeah. worth of, but that again, we're, we're getting there. Slowly yeah. but surely. And let's put the potatoes, potatoes in now. Potatoes in now, perfect. Um, the, the dream kind of for us was um, to have it so that people could leave here with a loaf of bread that they had made and they had confidence in their ability. So they, they made it and then we had lunch and it was baked and they took home their own loaf of bread that they had made. And when I did my follow-up research on it, I would call people that had attended to it. I used to still use that. People were so excited and they, you know, they had, because uh, they went home with some recipes with different things and people were telling me, oh yes, I made bread for everybody for Christmas and, you know, that sort of stuff. And so it was really exciting and it gave them a boost in confidence. Cooking is more than just eating, it's also socializing, it's also yeah. putting confidence in yourself. And we tried to come up with recipes that my goal was you could have it on the table fast and you could go through the drive through at McDonald's. I'm um, going to put the seasonings in here. And like I said, we've got some allspice, thyme, uh, oregano, uh, salt, and some cayenne pepper. We are going to be using the coconut milk, so I have used the, the full dose of the cayenne. The full dose of the cayenne, okay. Now, if you happen to be an individual who or your family loves the hot, Feel free to you know, knock on your scotch bonnets and your habaneros and all that sort of stuff. And if you're not a big fan of really hot, like put a little bit in, like a couple of drops of hot sauce or something, or a little bit, just to give it a bit of a kick. But you don't have to make it scalding hot. Perfect. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's a stew. The seasonings are kind of what make it what it is. Yeah. Um, I've seen this been made, but instead of beans, it was chicken. Yep, right? absolutely. Now we're going to throw a little little uh, tomato paste in here. And as far as I'm concerned, tomato paste is the best bang for your buck. It's uh, relatively cheap. I think the last time I looked at a can was like 87 cents. Um, this is about a half can. The recipe calls for two tablespoons, but my family really likes the taste of tomato in our stuff. And we're just waiting for this to come to a boil. And I've got about two cups of uh, white beans that have been cooked. Perfect. But like I said, canned beans, perfectly fine. Just, you know, rinse them and throw them in. And then we'll thicken the stew just a little bit when we're finished with a, a cornstarch slurry. The reason I do that is because, as you know, a thickened thing lets it sit on your tongue a little bit longer. And so you get more taste sensation than you do with an unthickened stew. Perfect. <laughs> Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with uh, the kitchen's original uh, cook or chef, uh, Kate McKay. <laughs> so Kate, we were talking about this stew here during the break and uh, we were talking about different substitutions and stuff like that because everyone knows that when you're on a budget and you're looking at recipes and you're like, oh, I'd love to have pigeon peas, but you can't have those pigeon peas. What, what can we use? Can you, is there a specific bean or can you put any old bean in there? Any bean. I have made it with chickpeas, black beans, I have made it with Romano beans, Pinto beans, you name it. It's whatever's on sale. Whatever's on sale, yeah. whatever you happen to have. And if you're like me, you cook up a big pot and you portion it out and you put it in the freezer in little baggies. 
and it's like I need it, and it's poof, pop into the pot. So I was going to get to that too. So <laughs> this is a, this is a great kind of meal planning thing. You can put these in. It freezes well. You mm -hmm. can kind of yeah. uh, works well in the slow cooker too. Does yeah. it? Awesome. Absolutely. It's a it's a very forgiving recipe, and you know the one fresh ingredient that we're using like peppers can often can be quite pricey absolutely the love thing i love about this is you know when you're going through the grocery store and it's the half off they're a little bit wilted or whatever nobody's going to notice the difference it's going into a stew and it's going to be wilted by the heat so this is the place to use those uh you know sell uh, by less than perfect, perfect yeah. sell, sell by dates um it's very very nutritious there's a lot of fiber that's in it yep and you know as far as seasonings and this is one of the things that we learned when we were working in the kitchen was that even if we went to different people that don't know how to cook don't have the confidence to substitute right they think they're going to ruin it well that's right it's that recipe is gospel and yeah. yes and so this is part of and this is uh, why we like these kind of recipes is because it is very flexible well anything that's in the fridge so yep. it doesn't have to be that mirepoix if you don't have something from that you can just put like we said it's a good cleanup yep. soup's always been a good kind of what they call in the restaurant business a fridge cleaning experience so it's very flexible fantastic and i guess that's basically why what the existence of the kitchen is yes and the whole idea it started with you and then we and then it, it, it finally ended up with me yeah which and I'm, I'm i'm happy that it's kind of changed so when when it first opened it we didn't call it the learning kitchen what what was it called when it we was first called started? the greener kitchen so but learning kitchen that really was what it was about originally we thought that we would get into um like community kitchens where people come together as a group and cook things we tried that a couple of times and it just didn't work because people are just too busy. There are a lot of people that are here at the food bank as clients, they're already working two jobs. Absolutely. So the way I look at it now is what I do now with the courses that I do is I give them the, the spark or the incentive. So when we're doing our team building, I'm like, this is kind of like a collective kitchen. So if you guys want to, and especially with my students that come in, what are you doing on a Friday night while well, you're going to watch the hockey game? Well, mm -hmm. before the hockey game, why don't a bunch of you show up a couple hours before, make the chili, make the whatever, and yeah. then take some of it home afterwards, make it an event. And yeah. I think that's what people don't understand is you don't have, you can cook to have a good time and make it a collective kitchen and then you split and it's cheaper. Yeah. Cooking together, buying power, the more you spend, the less it is mm -hmm. and the cheaper it is. So Yeah, and that's like a really important thing for, Spices, as you know, can be very expensive. You buy them in the Absolutely. grocery store. Those little bottles, you're paying for the bottle. Yeah. You know, if you can get an opportunity to go to one of the, the bulk groceries or something like that, or even the bulk section in, a, in the regular grocery stores, you know, your spices for this might come to five cents altogether. Absolutely. Right? But if you start buying bottles, that's huge, and that is a huge uh, disincentive for people. Well, exactly, and that's what we were talking about, substitution. So you yep. have your base herbs and spices in your pantry mm -hmm. that you can interchange. So you're yeah. right. So buying that turmeric that you're not going to use all the time in yeah. every recipe can be expensive. You're right. Yeah. So, yeah, get together and cook together, I think, is what we suggest. And mm -hmm. here at the Greener Village, and we've always offered it, is uh, groups to come in and do that. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that create is your terrific. own. We call, them, we, we call them community building or team building classes. Yes. Oh, terrific. But yeah, rephrase it, put a different spin on it. But essentially, it's the same thing. Is come mm -hmm. together as a group and cook together, learn about each other. And, uh, and if whatever you learn, I always say is through osmosis. It's social. People get a chance to come together and talk to each other about food. I mean, people have been talking about food together in groups for literally hundreds of thousands of years. Well, absolutely. <laughs> well, it, the reason why people got together in circles was to eat the kill and the and the, and and whatever they've harvested yeah. or forged for. This looks like it's ready to be thickened. So, yep, how do we I go about doing that? Well, I'm just going to make a, a little slurry here and grab. A another whisk right in the corner over there. A little one, yeah. There you go. So, and like I said, I just like it to, to stay a little bit so it stays on the tongue. And of course, as it stays on the tongue, it has an opportunity to 
for you to taste it instead of it just sliding away on you. No, no, absolutely. And uh, being a cornstarch, this is definitely a gluten-free. Absolutely. Uh, my husband is gluten-free, so I, I'm now accidentally gluten-free because my entire recipe book is now gluten-free. Gluten-free, <laughs> which, which isn't a bad thing. But again, if you wanted to, you could make a slurry with... Uh, with flour. Yep. The only difference is we'd have to cook this out a little bit longer because with cornstarch, it, it cooks out in an instant, but with flour, it probably takes about 10, 15 minutes before yeah. it becomes. Get rid of that raw flavor. Exactly. And now, if you just want to dump those in. We can do that. And I'm just going to turn the heat off. Or maybe I'll let you turn the heat off. Yeah, right here, just like that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And of course, I'm just going to stir those. Okay. Peppers in, and that's what I, and we're done. So that's ready to go. Yep. Well, that's fantastic. So if we wanted to, we could, uh, I always call it garnish or, or cream out with the coconut milk. Yep. Um, if you're feeling decadent, could you use cream or sour cream or something like that? I'm sure you could. I've never tried it. I just. Uh, I'm a I'm big fan of sour cream in my soup. It has that extra tang. Yeah, it's got that zippity doo that nothing else can provide. I just, I, I think probably in Jamaica, coconut cream is easier to come by than cream. I, I would say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there, that's it. That's it. Perfect. So you can eat this just like this. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you could put this over pasta, mm -hmm. over rice. Uh, yeah, I, it can go, it goes well with uh, like cornbread. Okay, yeah. Which is this uh, thing, or uh, we had been talking earlier, um, the Italians make something called polenta, which is just cornmeal and water, water and a bit of salt and a bit of butter and it's baked yep. right so it's kind of like a square I, I often make it because it's less ingredients and cheaper to make than what cornbread would be because uh, there's no eggs or anything well, like no, that. Well, no, no, it, it's basically, it, it's a porridge. Yeah. It, it, what it comes out to, and when I make mine, I, I can't help but put cheese in it. So it, mine's yeah. a little bit more expensive because I can't have polenta without Parmesan. So that's yeah, I don't. That, um, and this is baked. This is solid. It's like a cornbread. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, with yeah, the old fashioned. I haven't got the arm muscles <laughs> to make the polenta, which is of course stirred forever. Um, it goes good with a uh, roll. It goes good with uh, a nice tossed salad, coleslaw, anything along those lines. Perfect. So yeah. Like we said, it's great for meal planning. Uh, it freezes really, really well. Yeah. Um, and again, you can adapt it to what you have in your fridge, yep. what you have in your pantry. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. So thank you so much for coming in today, Kate, uh, giving us a little bit of a history on how the Learning Kitchen started. Um, it started off in great hands, and uh, I've got some pretty big shoes to fill. You guys have always done a great job, and I'm so happy to have you on. And uh, Well, you have no idea how happy I am that the Learning Kitchen is in your wonderful and creative hands, because it really is terrific, perfect. knowing that this is going forward into the future and is helping people with the same sort of vision that we had that it was going to be. Well, it is. It's uh, the old adage of uh, giving a hand up along with the handout, I think, is mm -hmm. the way it was put to me when I first interviewed for the job. And I, I love that idea and that yeah. concept. So we've got this lovely stew right here that we can serve with this beautiful crusty bread that was donated. Um, and we get some lovely day olds, which doesn't mean that they're bad. They're no, just, that's what I, it works great. And that's it's what I look for first. For <laughs> it's cheaper, right? Yes. And, I mean, a nice crusty roll that's a day old works great in stews like that because yes. it'll sop up all that goodness. And then always something green and fresh. Mm. Uh, sprouts. I've got these lovely pea shoots that were donated as well. Oh, and uh, it looks fantastic. Thank I you think. so much. Thanks for having me. I am absolutely pleased to be here. Right on. Thank you. Thank you.